A goodness of fit test is used to um, check to see if a particular um, frequency distribution fits a claimed or expected frequency distribution. So for example, if you were to take a survey and people could answer different ways for a question and you expected a certain number of people to answer each way, you could check to see if your sample or what they actually answered matched your expectation. So it's called a goodness of fit test. Uh, we're going to learn some new notation. We have um, O for observed frequencies. We have E for expected frequencies. And these are the ones that you're going to get from um, some null hypothesis that you write. And K is going to be the number of categories. N is the total number of trials. So all the sample individuals added together. So requirements that we need to check in order to do this test is it has to be a random sample. Uh, we need to have frequency data, so numbers of um, individuals in each category. And the expected count has to be at least five for each category. So those are some things we'll check at the beginning of every problem. The test statistic in this test is called chi-squared, and it's just a big script x squared. Again, it's another Greek letter. And to calculate chi-squared, you take your observed value, the one from your sample, minus the expected value, which is from your null hypothesis, square the difference and divide by the expected value. And you do that for each category and add all of them together. And that will give you chi-squared. Um, we're going to be using the, the chi-squared table to get um, to make our conclusions. So we're going to need degrees of freedom and that equals k minus 1, where k is the number of categories that you have. So in class, we'll look at how to use the table. So just a couple other things before we get to an example. Um, e, the expected value, is something that you can calculate two different ways. You can do n divided by k if you think that all the categories should be equal. Or you can do n times p if you have Uh, a proportion or percentage that you expect for each category, you can use that to calculate expected values, so n times p. And in that case, they wouldn't be all equal. We're going to do an example of each one. Um, the hypotheses, if, if you're saying that all groups are equal, so this, this first category here, all groups are equal or at least one group is different. Then you would calculate your expected values by using n divided by k. If you had some other uh, way that you're doing it, so some other expected distribution, and then you'd say different than expected, um, and that would go with calculating the expected values by doing n times p. So again, it depends on what you think for your categories. If you think they should all be equal, your null hypothesis should say that they're all equal. Your alternative should say at least one is different. And you do your expected value n divided by k. Uh, if you are using some other distribution, so different percentages for each category, then your null hypothesis will say that distribution that you think. Your alternative hypothesis will say that it's somehow different and you'll use n times p to calculate your expected values. For our goodness of fit test example, we're going to be looking at a survey of a simple random sample of 100 people asking their political affiliation, which was Democrat, Republican, Independent, or other or none. It was also a possible answer. The question asks to do it two different ways. We're going to look at um, testing the hypothesis that all the groups are equal. And we're also going to do one where we have expected percentages to start out with. So again, we can use um, 
two different methods to calculate the expected value with our two different null hypotheses. Uh, the survey data is given to us here, so these are observed values. So they're from the sample. We have to calculate the expected values, and we'll do that in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is check requirements. We need to have random samples, and it says that in the problem. Uh, we need to have values of x in different categories. And we have that. We have numbers of people who answered for each possible political affiliation. And we need the expected values to be greater than 5 for each category. And we don't have expected values yet, so we're going to come back and check that one after we figure out our expected values. So what we can do, I'm just going to draw a line down the middle here. And we're going to put problem A, which is that all the groups are equal, over on this side. And problem B, which is some other distribution that we expect, over on this side. So we'll have the same problem, but solving it two different ways. So if all the groups are equal, our null hypothesis will be all groups are equal. And the alternative hypothesis will be at least one is different. To calculate expected frequencies, when you expect that all the groups are equal, you can just do n divided by k. So it told us in the problem that there were 100 people in the survey. We have four possible groups. So we'd expect each group to have 25 people in that group. Um, if we were doing it the other way, the null hypothesis would use our expected distribution. So 35%, I'm just going to use decimals, 35% Democrat, 35% Republican, 20% independent, and 10% other or none. And the alternative hypothesis would say that the distribution is something different. So expected values in this case is n times p. And so we have to do each one separately. For Democrats, we have 100 times 0.35, which gives us 35. Republicans is 100 times 0.35 as well, so we'd get 35 there. Independence, 100 times 0.2 would give you 20. And other, 100 times 0.1, which gives you 10. So we have expected values and hypotheses now for both ways, um, or both questions that we're asked about. So calculating chi-squared is kind of a long drawn out process and there really is no shortcut um, on your calculators. So we have to do this one by hand. So here's the equation just as a reminder. So we have to do this equation for each category and then add up all the um, calculations. So for Democrats, we had an observed value of 31. We have an expected value of 25. And we always divide by the expected value. For Republicans, we had an observed value of 28. The expected value is 25 squared divided by the expected value, 25. Independence, we had an observed value of 30. 
The expected value is 25. Square the difference, divide by the expected value 25. And for other, the observed was 11. Expected is 25. Square the difference and divide by expected 25. All right, so to do this in your calculator, again, kind of do it in parts. I'm just going to, um, I solved the, the top of each part, so I'm just going to write down the fractions that we get. And you can practice doing these on your calculator to make sure that you get the same numbers. So there's our four values, and when you add that all together and turn it into a decimal instead of a fraction, you get 10.64. Alright, so that is chi-squared for the hypothesis that all groups should be the same. Now let's do the same thing over here for having all the groups, um, having certain percentages expected. So again, for Democrats, we have an observed value of 31. And now the expected value for Democrats is 35. Square the difference and divide by the expected. Republicans observed was 28, expected is 35. Square that and divide by 35. Independents, 30 observed, 20 expected square it and divide by 20. And for other, we had 11 observed, 10 expected, square that and divide by 10. Okay. So just do a quick check and make sure that your expected value is what's on the bottom of each fraction. And then we'll go ahead and do the math. So um, let's see, we get these fractions. Okay. And when you add all these up and um, again convert it to a decimal instead of fractions, you get a chi-squared of 6.96. So again, there is no calculator function for this test. Um, so you do have to calculate chi-squared by hand, and you do have to use the table to determine what your decision is going to be. We're not going to be able to use a p-value for this test. We have to use the critical value from a table. Okay, so that's what we're going to do to solve this in the next step. So we would use the chi-squared table. Uh, we have alpha is 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom is k minus 1. The number of categories or possible you know, responses to this question was 4. So our degrees of freedom is 3. So the critical value of chi-squared, if we look on the table in row 3 for degrees of freedom and go over to the column with alpha equals 0 0.05, we'd get 7.815. And that's going to be the same no matter which hypothesis we're using. So our critical value method, uh, remember our test statistic had to be bigger than the critical value in order to reject the null hypothesis. So on this side, our, our test statistic for chi-squared was 10.64. Our critical value of chi-squared is 7.815. So our test statistic is bigger. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said that all the groups were equal. 
So our conclusion is that that's not true, um, that political party affiliation is not all equally distributed. Um, over on the side where we were looking at an actual um, expected distribution where they weren't all equal, um, do the same thing. So we have a test chi-squared, which was 6.96, and we have a critical value, which is 7.815. Now on this one, the critical value is bigger, so we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said that 35% were Democrat, 35% Republican, 20% Independent, and 10% Other. So that's what we can say for our conclusion. Um, the distribution of political affiliation is just like the null hypothesis said, 35% Democrat, 35% Republican, 20% Independent, and 10% other or none. So now we have an example of um, doing a goodness of fit test where all the groups are equal, and we have an example of the goodness of fit test where you're fitting it to an expected um, set of percentages for each category.